The West Penra Papers A Journey Through the Multiverse The Second Level of Learning http colon slash slash westbenry.com Interdimensional Manipulation in Present Time Prophecy Paper Number 1, The Obsession with Fulfilling Prophecy by Wes Penra, Saturday, October 6, 2012, http colon slash slash westbenry.com, Part 2 3. The Hysteria Around the Mayan Calendar I just read an interesting article in the newspaper about 2012, the end of the world and the Mayan calendar. There are a lot of theories about what will happen in 2012 based on this old so-called prophecy. The problem is that no one has been asking the Mayans themselves, and their descendants still exist. The article in the newspaper was very short, but basically the Mayans had been asked what is really going to happen in 2012, and they said that nothing will happen at least not something that's based on their calendar. It has nothing to do with the end of the world, weather changes, earthquakes, or any of the sort. In fact, their calendar has never been about prophecies on a worldwide basis. This is not the only time I hear this. Not only did Robert Morning Sky, on his Robert Bear Claw website, http colon slash slash www.robertbearclaw.com slash page 4.html right parenthesis says in an audio lecture the exact same thing, but I saw a video recently as well where they interviewed the Mayan descendants themselves. They said that they had been quiet, because whatever they would say would be twisted and lies and altered information would be spread as truth on the internet so they are afraid that we in the modern society are not capable of keeping information intact. In that particular video, they said that they never predicted the end of the world. So, there we have it from the horse's mouth. In the light of this, if you read LPGCS essays above, you see that they tell you that the Mayans most probably foresaw the super wave, and perhaps even the return of Nibiru. But, according to the descendants of the real Mayans, they did nothing of the sort, so LPGCS twist on it is exactly what they are talking about, and the reason why the Mayans have kept quiet. Still, the Mayans knew that this is the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new although they didn't predict anything special to happen. It doesn't mean, of course, that because the Mayans didn't predict anything, that nothing is going to happen. It just means that if it happens, the Mayans did not predict it. While I'm writing this, I got curious and checked to see what Anton Parks has to say about it, and I noticed he says the same thing, the Mayans did not predict the end of the world, http colon slash slash www.antonparks.com slash main.php question mark page equal sign never you write parenthesis. Note that you need to read this in a Google Chrome browser, which automatically translates French to English. There he also shows a good picture of the Mayan calendar explaining that it is based on cycles within cycles, wheels within wheels, where the cycle around the zodiac is just one of the minor cycles. I would personally go so far as to say that if something really bad happens in 2012 or around that time, it's going to happen because of human and alien technology, and it's going to be planned that way. Other than that, we are going to be just fine. I do believe that the super wave will hit us, and although it will possibly cause some severe weather and earth changes, and perhaps cause the death of an unknown amount of people, the wave in itself is a ultimately a good thing, meant to boost us into becoming a new, upgraded species. In fact, this super wave has already hit us, we're in the middle of it, and the earth changes are already happening. I think we are reaching the climax of its effect by the end of this year and then it's slowly going to pass our solar system and continue out in deep space to hit another solar system somewhere down its galactic path. We need to remember that LPGC is working with the Syrian overlords, not against them. When I heard they are joining up with U2 Shamash and that AR and him are good friends and call each other lords, I knew it was bad news. The title, Lord is something the Syrians only give each other when they've earned it, as U2 put it. They have always been spreading fear-based information, but now more bluntly than ever before, as we shall see soon. The reason the super wave would cause deaths would be due to that people die as a direct effect from earth changes, or they are not prepared for the intense energies we are bombarded with, 
so their neurological system may collapse, which will lead to that the person will act irrational and in extreme cases go insane and commit suicide, or even kill other people. However, for those who live through it and come out on the other end it will show to have been very enhancing for the awakening of consciousness and awareness. 4. Primary Events If you are hanging up a string on the wall you need a needle or something to stick through the string so that it stays on the wall. In fact, you need one needle on both ends it you want it go horizontal. It is the same thing with timelines. It needs a primary event to start a new timeline so it has something to be anchored to. One typical primary event would be the drop of the atom bombs in Japan at the end of World War II, another is 9-11. If we want to go much further back another one would be the deluge. Now when we're heading towards a new cycle, it looks like the Syrians want a unifying event that may be traumatizing enough to start a new timeline, something that would unify the whole world population. From the research I have done in this field, I have had the privilege to get some insight into the Syrians' whereabouts through LPGC, but also learned even more about their deceptive nature. They now seemingly want to use the incoming A.AM.E as a primary event once more, just like they apparently did when the biblical deluge happened. For a while it looked like it was the super wave, but that has now been put on the back burner. AR says that we are past due for the super wave so it may happen any time from today up to 500 years in the future, so it doesn't sound that they are concentrating on that event right now. From have said that the incoming planet is no longer an issue as other things will happen first, it has now been voted up to top one again. I would suggest the readers keep an eye open on the four links I put up in the last paper to see what their next step is. I want to clarify one thing, however. According to LPGC, it's not just a .rs organization and a faction of the Syrians, including U2 Shamash, the Syrian ambassador to Earth, who are supposedly working on saving mankind from an upcoming disaster, AR says his organization has been working in conjunction with several different star races they have been meeting with on an annual basis, off-planet and on our planet. AR has told us, his email group, that in those annual meetings other human groups have attended as well and I get the feeling he's talking about corporate CEOs and their top management, and groups of that caliber, but it's apparently confidential, and he is not to mention the names of those human groups, although he has mentioned from which star systems the different ET groups come who are attending these meetings. Although these gatherings usually are held on an annual basis, it seems like they have been scheduled more frequent lately due to alleged upcoming events. However, if these meetings are taking place at all, I don't think the attendants are a mix of random ET races who want to help, if the gatherings are real, they are held by the Syrian Alliance, and they seem rushed, because they are making serious mistakes. In order to figure things out, I have stayed as a member of LPGCS Linkage Institute, which consists of people from different walks in life, but in one way or the other I have done something LPGC finds worthwhile so that they can become members in this closed group. It is nothing more than a group where we members can share ideas, ask questions, and make comments. The goal is to find a solution to the end-time problems and start working on them. By being on that group, I was able to hear what was happening on LPGCS, and the Syrians' end of the spectrum, but couldn't say much about it. I wanted to know enough, or all I needed to know, before I came out in public with my disagreements with the group. The entire papers in the second level of learning have been a counteract to what LPGC is teaching. I have been exposing the Syrians for what they are, presented a feminine universe, and done my best to de-demonize the Aryans, who have gotten an undeserved bad reputation thanks to Syrian propaganda. All this goes totally against what LPGC stands for. If I'd done the exact opposite, I would have been doing their work. AR has been quiet about my level 2 papers, but then the story goes that he's been pretty busy elsewhere. Then again, he and the Syrians may not care, because they think people like me can't make much of an impact and slash or in any way threaten the Syrian power. It's the same arrogance they have when comes to researchers into the New World Order and the so-called Illuminati. They think, let them have it. They can't stop us. I think that is their biggest mistake. 5. 
the 3% rule revisited. Perhaps the reader remembers how I talked about the 3% rule in level I? If not, the 3% rule means that there is a theory that if 3% of a world population are on the same page and agree to the same thing, the rest of the population will follow, quite like the 100th monkey syndrome, please google this if you are unfamiliar with it. So, the story goes that if 3% will unite in a common goal of any kind, the rest of the world population will join in. I have a problem with that, because if we look at religions, just to take an example, those who endorse Roman Catholicism exceed 3% of the world population, but that doesn't mean that the rest of mankind have become Catholics. So I don't see how that would work. Well, if we do succeed in uniting 3% to agree to a certain goal for mankind and its future, the ET races who are observing us are allegedly going to take us seriously and listen to us, and perhaps also help us. They say that humankind is scattered all over and can't agree to anything, and we don't even have any goals for our future. We are just going with the flow and let the Syrians steer us wherever they want. Like cattle, we just follow the leaders to the slaughterhouse. It's not only about ourselves, but our planet and parts of the universe also, as we shall see. We are responsible for our planet, what we do with it, and what effect that has on the rest of the universe. It is true that mankind does not have a goal for the future. If you ask world leaders, it certainly depends on whom you ask and you will get a different answer depending on that particular world leader's vision. If you ask Mr. and Mrs. Jones on the street, a large percentage would probably not have an answer at all because they have not even thought about it, others may make something up on the spot to save their faces, while a few may actually have an answer they have thought through, but often based on ignorance due to that information is missing from their world view. They don't know anything about the situation we're sitting in on the most part. Those who do may know about a shadow government, but still don't have the knowledge required to make a rational decision. This is where mankind stands today, and it's pitiful to say the least. How can we have a future at all if we can't get together and agree on one? However, it now looks like the same ETS who did not believe in us one and a half years ago have decided to give us a hand anyway if we are to believe LPGC. Therefore, LPGC are apparently super busy doing something to save our future, one thing being setting up these four websites, if we include their own LPGC website. It says in their mission statement for, and I quote, what do we hope for? We hope for that at least 3% of the world's population can see this message and awaken to remember what has to be done for all of us to continue existing as a biokind either here on Earth or anywhere else in the universe. 5. This means in other words that they are hoping that 3% of the population, which is 3% out of 7 billion are going to visit their sites. Simple math shows us that this equates 210 million people. That is a lot of visitors, and to be honest, I am not even sure which websites at all have had 210 million visitors in a few months. Nibiru is supposed to hit December 2012, or latest January 2013. So I am not sure why they think we can reach such a lofty goal. I wish they had a site counter on their four pages, so we all can see how many visitors they will have. I am actually going to suggest that, because I think we all should have the right to keep track of that. Still, it's not feasible, especially when all that's written so far is the mission statement. Also, LPGCS main website, http colon slash slash lifephysicsgroup.org is down since several weeks. This has been brought to LPGCS attention several times, myself included, but the answer we get is that the group is super busy doing other things, so that has to wait. I can understand that, but if we are to promote these sites, their main website needs to be up and running. And after all, they have a separate webmaster who is usually taking care of that business, and I am quite sure he is not on their mission. Anyway, I suggest the reader reads the LPGC mission statement at http colon slash slash earthhopeinitiative.com slash index.php slash mission hyphen statement to see for themselves and get a feeling for it. 6. What to expect? The groups, mostly secret societies, 
who are working hard to make prophecies come true are not to be taken lightly. Especially those who know their magic often understand what they're doing, at least on a higher level of society. They understand the power of thought and how thought and intention can manifest in reality. Those who are skilled take assistance from demons and non-physicals to help them provoke the catastrophes and changes necessary to fulfill the perpendicularly inserted blueprints from the future on a linear timeline, followed by vector inserted and intended thought forms from past to future and vice versa. The more power they can put toward that timeline, the more likely it is that it manifests and not only fades away as a probable one. So, I emphasize that the only really serious problems we may have in regards to 2012 or the years that follow would be if we let these black magicians decide our future. People may say, how can we stop them, we are not as powerful as they are and we know nothing about magic. It is true that most people know nothing about magic, but it's not true that we are less powerful than them. I would say quite the contrary. Our problem is that we don't use the powers we have but let others make our decisions. This is why it's so devastating for the children when we constantly make decisions for them. This is one of the reasons we are sitting in a jam, the kids, when they grow up expect someone else to be the decision makers for them, and quite often, it is still the parents even when the kids have grown up. Instead, let the kids make their own decisions as much as possible and guide them instead and support their dreams and visions from when they are very little. Of course, interfere when they are doing something that is not ethical and explain to them why it's not a good idea to do what they did, what the consequences of their actions are, and protect them from themselves and others when necessary. But I see way too often that parents still solve the kids' problems when they are adults. This makes the parents all-powerful. And of course, when the parents are not there, they give the grown-up children give their power away to somebody else. I think the reader can see the point I'm making. If we all started realizing how powerful we are, and how strong our fires can burn inside of us if we only give it all a chance, the magicians would be failing in no time, because there would be no room for them. If we are creating our own timelines, far from the prophetic ones that lead us straight to hell, including the ones in the Bible, the timeline the Syrians have given power to for so long will diminish to a probable timeline, which then will fade away and cease to exist. The multiverse no longer has any place for it, because not enough energy is transmitted onto it. This is the easiest way to do it, keep yourself informed of what's really going on, not what the media say is going on, but don't endorse anything that you don't want to bring into being. However, to be able to do so, you must, and I can't emphasize this enough, you must have a strong vision of which probable future you want to live in. Make sure you have it all planned in your mind, and if applicable, in the physical universe as well. Then, whatever happens in your life, contradicting your vision, threw it out. Don't fall for temptations that are leading you astray, keep your goal of your own future intact and restate it to yourself on a daily basis and when times are rough, do it several times a day. All this is much more important today than it was even a year ago, because the energies are moving super quickly, and your thoughts manifest faster and more solid than ever before. So no sloppy thinking. I can tell you 100% that it works. I can tell because I have first-hand experience, and nothing can beat that. The last three to four years have been very tough in my own life, and the situation seemed totally hopeless. Then I came up with this idea in my own mind of how I wanted this to progress, and what my learning process in this was. I set a straight goal of how I wanted things to be in the very near future, and I put a very strong intention there that my goal was going to be reached. I felt inside that something very powerful happened, because when this situation would turn around, it was going to lead to something I couldn't dream of before. So. Life went on, but with one big difference. As soon as something happened, or someone had ideas that countered my goal, I always said no, that's not what I want. I want this. I didn't accept anything which did not lead directly towards my goal, and it worked like a clock. It wasn't even that hard. Now I have almost reached the goal altogether and only have a little bit left to go, but what is left to be accomplished is relatively easy to accomplish 
and there is nothing that can stop it from happening, it's just some small things that need to get in place, which they will. So, I went from something that looked like it was going to lead to a total disaster to something very positive, and all this only because I had one, a vision of a future that I wanted, and two, I put a strong intention towards it, saying to myself that I will not accept anything that counters my vision to manifest in my life for any reason. I will become unreasonable with this. Then the universe bent to my will, or rather, I created a slight change in the multiverse, and everything that was close to meeting that vibration had to adjust to my will. So, I now live in a multiverse which is slightly different from the one I would have lived in if I had given up at one point or another. This in itself is what magic is all about, to manifest one's own thoughts by putting a strong intention out and put energy on that line of intention. Learn to throw out distractions, and your goal will manifest. If we could do this on a grand scale, we could wipe the whole planet clean from controlling forces. So, what we can expect in the future depends on us rather than those who are working on manifesting things we don't want. Timelines split and merge all the time, and we all live in slightly different multiverses, and in the future, not all of us will live in the same reality, not even the same version of Earth. If enough people give energy to a machine world, it is certainly going to manifest for those people, or it's even enough to do nothing and we will all end up in this android world. But there will be others who will manifest other realities, where being controlled by machines is not an option, and by changing and building a new timeline without having extraterrestrial control over our lives, we will incrementally create a world without negative influences from power-hungry entities. The purpose of my papers is to present the common part of the multiverse we humans, as a soul group as a mass consciousness are living in currently, and present different choices we have. It is not up to me to decide for others which choice they are going to make, each one is their own master and has the right to choose whatever they want. But I also want to present the potential consequences of the decisions we make. In some instances, the consequences are a good and happy life and a journey which is leading to the stars, while on other occasions, the consequences are harsh, at least in the long run. Those who choose the latter need to ponder if they are willing to take those consequences or not. If they are, it's their choice, but I want them to walk into them fully knowing what they're doing to self and others. So those who don't want to know should stop reading here, because the next couple of papers will tell more about the serious consequences of choosing to put energy towards certain timelines, and it is quite shocking. I know some people will still choose to do that anyway, even with adequate knowledge by simply continue doing nothing, and I can't do anything about that, nor is it my task to do so. Many of those who will choose the machine world in spite of warnings are those who don't want to believe what they're reading. They may think it's interesting, but they have no wish to change. I just want to make sure I have covered everything I can think of is relevant for people to know, for the sake of the future of humanity. That is my task and my mission in this life.